guys, welcome back today uh, on Ben Lester Photography. Um, today I am going to show you this laptop I've got in front of me right here. So this is a Dell XPS 15 um, and it is the 4K model from the 2017 range. Um, so if you're going to look for it, it's the 9560 um, and it's uh, very new and I've been using it for all my Adobe apps and uh, all my editing so if I'm doing a video now it'll be on this thing instead of a big Mac which was underpowered um, this is one of the top spec laptops so as I said it's got the 4k screen um, which has a 99% color gambit uh, Adobe RGB and that basically means that it's completely correct or oh, it's 99% correct uh, for the colors that it shows on the screen also I've got a one terabyte hard drive SSD hard drive which is super fast um, and graphics card in it which is a GTX graphics card 1050 and a 32 gig of RAM uh, and that is absolutely plenty for a laptop after I've gone through that really quickly, I just kind of want to show you guys how I go about editing so you can take from what I do and maybe apply it to your own photos. Um, I will do a, another video on video editing down the line, um, but today I'm purely going to be doing everything on Adobe Lightroom Classic, um, which is probably, I find, one of the most useful uh, apps for editing photos. So I'm going to pick a few photos on here. How's it this one? So recently I did a portrait shoot and that was probably one of the best portrait shoots that I've ever done um, and I took some photos of a model called uh, Zarnab and she was really really good model to take photographs of. We went around Manchester and found a lot of urban shots and this is one of the photos that uh, actually came out of it and I was really proud of this one. The colours on it are actually the actual kind of like um, brief that I was given um, to apply to something which is for a fashion company or a model agency. Um, so what I had in mind was this kind of like faded, uh, desaturated look, um, which looked a little bit retro, but with my style instead of somebody else's style, which I really um, find that most of them are quite overbaked. So with this one, um, I took a photo in between a frame, which actually gave me most of the photo so I didn't need to crop too much um, but here is the before <laughs> going to the develop module first so when this loads up I'll show you so here is the before and here is the after as you can see that's a huge difference um, this one was probably a little bit underexposed, uh, but because I knew that the highlights were a little bit too much, I could bring up the shadows afterwards in post, like I have done in here. So, what I'm going to do is show you how I went about this one. So what I want to do here is really brighten that exposure because as you can see in the histogram here, most of the, um, the middle is white and you want to make sure that, as you can see in the histogram here, you want to make sure that it really the histogram is centered um, so it peaks in the middle instead of at the bottom or at the top but that does depend on what photo it is. And in this photo, it really needs it. So I'm going to bring these midtones out and already you can see that the photo is already like popping out of the screen. And um, literally I could just leave it there and be like, okay, I am done, nothing to do. Um, but to get that kind of um, warm retro faded look, I wanted to change this white balance and um, so here I've got that. Um, so as you can see, already I'm getting towards that photo that I took before. But with this one, there is a little bit more of a fade to it. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, so 
really don't want to be fiddling too much with this sort of stuff here because you can, as you can see it makes things flat so what i'm going to do is bring that down just a tiny bit bring them whites up to counterbalance it bring out the shadows just a tiny bit because as soon as you do that boom it makes uh makes everything look a little bit unreal um so just a little bit um then to counterbalance that i put the blacks in um and I do put the blacks in when I'm trying to fade something just because then I have a basis photo. And then if I ever want to fade anything, I will go down into the tone curve, make sure I have the shadows centered so it's a straight line. And all I'm changing here is this bottom one. Um, also, to get this line, you want to be toggling this button here. Um, because if you want to do this and try and move the darks, it doesn't really work as effectively. So we're in this point curve bit and you need to click the right bit first to do it. And all I do is bring this up ever so slightly. Some people do suggest to do that. Um, and if you know how to counterbalance it, then that's great. But I don't really want to overbake it. So I'm doing that now. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> There's some funky colors in there. Right. So what I do then is bring this, these shadows down just a tiny bit. And then I bring these highlights out as well. So that's the blacks faded. There's another part of this um, tone curve which is up here, which I want to bring down just a little bit too. So I've done that tone curve now. I've completely forgotten about this. With portraits, I do like to make sure that the skin isn't too uh, contrasted um, and it's smoother. So I pull that contra uh, clarity down just a few notches and then everything's good. Um, as you can see now, it's very dark still. So what I'm going to do is just bring out them shadows again. And they, there's all the detail stored and there is nothing else to change. So at the moment, I do have a very um, popping um, photo of the colors and I want to change that. So what I'm going to do is bring this saturation down so it looks like everything is desaturated. Um, and then with the vibrance, which it, the vibrance really helps because it pinpoints them colors you really want to bring out. I'm going to just pop that out just a tiny bit so it helps me with my color grade in a second. So I what I want to be doing is making sure the colors that are most important are popping out. Uh, so orange is what I want there. Uh, the green actually might want to do the same. Yeah, I quite like the green in that. Um, and that's about it for luminance. Uh, saturation. I brought the greens down a little bit and then the oranges up like this. Um, I don't think yellow is that important because it's basically just what pushing them greens out a little bit. Um, and then, is there anything here? There's basically no blues. The only blues that are changing are like on the outskirts here, and I don't really use them anyway. So I'll leave that as it is. Uh, aqua, no. So basically what you want to be doing is fiddling around with these because you really don't want to be, you know, um, popping out the wrong colors. So if you just do that, um, you know, you can see which colors are changing. Right. And that is more or less it. I want to be doing what every single photo should have, which is this um, and this. So this is a better example of the masking. So what I want to do is make sure that the things that I want to sharpen are covered with the white lines. And then I put the sharpening up. Um, I don't really mess around with the radius and detail. If I ever do anything, I'll bring the radius down. Um, and that's more or less it. So you can see from the photo I did and edited compared to the photo I've just done that. Um, but if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, smash that subscribe button, comment below, and give me some critis criticism as well so I can learn from what I am doing on these videos. Um, but until next time, see you again.